the moments yeah. that I mean, you know, maybe you go to a half an hour or one hour or a half a day or whatever that is. It depends on the person that the mind takes over and yeah. it keeps blaming itself or blaming you. I mean, basically, they're both the same and it keeps blaming. And then when you catch yourself, yeah. uh, if you have the awareness, recognizing it, then you're free from it. You get out of it. So my, I can only speak of my own experience because I'm not in anybody else's head. So I don't know what's going on in someone else's head. Uh, I know what's going on in my own head <laughs> to a certain point. Yeah, there are moments like it takes over. And uh, I may hear like a voice saying, you idiot, you're so stupid, you made the same mistake over and over again. Yeah. And, and then when you recognize that it's your mind is judging because my mind judges everything else, other people, other scenarios, um, before I can catch it, it makes its own judgment. So, but then when you recognize it, you're back. You're back here again. So that part is okay. And, and I'm not just addressing it to you, I'm addressing it to everyone that it's okay if your mind goes crazy and become ju judgmental of yourself specifically. And once you catch it, you're back. You're back in the center and nothing really happened. Hmm. Yeah. So, other, other than a, a possible uh, roller coaster ride emotionally and yeah, emotionally. A roller coaster ride exactly. Yeah. That's, yeah, but it's you know the roller coaster ride. It's kind of it appears to be a necessity. It appears to be to, it forces you to come to this place of the watcher, you know, because it's so painful and it's so redundant and it happens so many times. And it's kind of, you have to burn this process. You have to keep going through it so many times. It appears to be that way. To the point that you start to because it's so painful and it's so up and down and it's so redundant and it's happened so many times that at one point it forces you to step outside and just completely be watchful of it, be aware of it, even though it's happening. Because there isn't anything you can do or I can do about the emotional roller coaster. I have no power over my emotions. I can't control them to be up or down. Yeah, if I have a lot of anxiety, I can just go pour some wine or drink some booze to mellow down the anxiety of the nervous system or take a Valium or smoke some weed or whatever or have sex or whatever you got to do or go for a run somehow to try to mellow down your nervous system but it's rise and fall is outside of my hand I, there's not much I can there's nothing I can do about it but I can just be aware of it when I remember the awareness is there and it doesn't have any power over the awareness. You can be up and down and up and down, but that doesn't touch the fact that you're aware of it. So what we're trying to learn here is not a system to control our thoughts or our emotions because it doesn't work. We have tried that. 
thousands of people before us have tried to create a system to control, be in control of their emotions. And it just does not work. The key is to, to be aware of them, have an awareness that they're up and be aware that they're down. And in that awareness, a separation happens between something which is not changing, something which is observing of something that's going up and down. Who's aware of these ups and downs? Who's aware of, if I'm emotionally heartbroken because of a woman or a man or whatever broke my heart, how am I aware of it? Who's aware of it? You're certainly aware of your ups and downs because they're very strong and, and they, they grab you. You can't, you have to be really numb not to notice it. And we've been doing it all of our lives, really paying attention to our emotions or busy mind. But what we haven't done is to step outside of it, to observe it. What we've been trying to do all these years is how to control them. And yeah, there's some people, you know, maybe military people or hardcore of some sort that they have been doing a lot of training on really controlling their emotions and not showing their sorrow, not crying, not to show their anger or whatever. And they just created this face of, it's solid. You don't, you can't read their emotions, but that doesn't mean internally they don't feel it. So my experience is I could, I cannot really, yeah, you all, everybody's trying to control their emotions. You know, if you are in a public situation and something happens, you get a little bit sad. You know, you're going to try to control yourself not to cry in front of a bunch of people you don't know or try to control your anger to the point you can, so you don't blow it. Of course, we're all try. I try, so. But can I control my emotions 100%? No, of course not. But I can observe it. I can fall back into this place of the witness, of the observer, fall back into this place of that doesn't change. Recognizing this part of me that doesn't change. Coming to that place and then observing anything that changes. So now there's a separation and you become free to that separation. Thanks for bringing it up, uh, Christopher. That was a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. I hope I answered your question. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Very good. And let's put a little bit light on romantic relationships. How's that? That's something you want, should we talk about it? Or, or that's a no, no. Is that um, also another thing I recognized that I meet somebody and I feel a spark and there is energy. There is like what I've discovered is there is a presence that appears between me and someone else. 